السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر تھرٹی نائن آف ایس بی آر وچ از آئی فار ویز فار ایس ایم ایس ایس ایم ایس مینس اسمال میڈیم انٹرپرائز اوکے دس از اے ویری اسمال اسٹینڈرڈ ویری ایزی ٹو ریمبر اوکے بیسیکلی آئی فار ایس فار ایس ایم ایس از وی اسٹل ہیو دا سیم آئی فار ایس رول اولی دیر از نو چینجز از جسٹ دیٹ دیر ہیز بین سم سمپلیفیکیشنس دیر ہیز بین میڈ ٹو دس اسٹینڈرڈ اینڈ آلسو Some things which are there under full IFRS are omitted for SME company. Okay. Now, regarding your SBR exam, this topic is not very frequently tested. Okay. But if it's tested, if it's ever tested, then make sure that you know the standard. Okay. Because it's very easy to score marks in the standard. Trust me. It's very easy. If you if you can just recall few facts because you know all of the IFRS we have completed, okay? IFRS 16 was the last standard, starting from IAS 1 to IFRS 16. So all the full IFRS since you know it, okay? This is this is going to be very easy for you. That's why this is the last lecture. After all the IFRS, I'm going to teach this one. Why? Because you should know the full IFRS, okay? Before you. No IFRS for SMS because SMS is just the simplification of the full IFRS with some uh, some omission also because obviously it will be more simpler, more easier to apply for small companies. This IFRS, okay, this set of IFRS. It is not something new, but it is just some amendment has been made to the existing IFRS. That's it. And if it ever comes in your SBR exam. Okay, think yourself. You are very lucky because it's very easy to score marks in this stand. Okay, so let's start. Here we are going to go through the definition. What are the omissions from the standard? Accounting choices. Those are disallowed. Usually, you are given accounting choices under every standard, right? But in SME standard, under some standards, no choices are allowed. Some simplifications has been made to the standard, and finally, advantages and disadvantages. Starting with the definition. Small, medium enterprise. See in your case study given to you, okay, in your SBR, you have to see what type of entity you are dealing with. Is it a small, medium enterprise or a big? If it's small or medium, you have to use IFRS for SMS. You cannot use full IFRS. But if it is a big company, then you have to use the full IFRS that we have studied from IS one to IFRS sixteen. But to know what is small and medium enterprise, you should know these things because. it should have this characteristics number 1 the number of individuals are small usually they are family oriented business right where owner is usually going to manage a small number of people next in terms of financial terms also it will be small like revenue will be small your assets your liabilities will be small okay even the employees the number of employees will be small third the transactions that are made in smes are less complex and difficult and now we are moving on to the key omission okay so these are the four omissions that has, that has been made this four omissions only you have to remember that's it number 1 is 33 we have already covered is 33 it is not applicable for sms why I mean, in SBI, they might not ask you why, but I am asking you generally. Why do you think it is so? Because big companies are usually they trade their shares on public, right? So they will get a quoted price. It's easy, easily available. But for medium or small, they are family oriented business, right? So you will not easily get a, a quoted price for them. So there is no point of having IS thirty uh, three applicable for them. That is earnings per share, right? That's the reason. Second, interim reporting, same. in term reporting is done by huge companies and all okay small companies and all because they are managing it daily so the owner usually knows what's there okay so is 34 it's omitted third segmental reporting again the bigger the business the more segments will be having but if you're a small business it's unlikely that you're going to have segments so segmental reporting is also omitted and finally assets held for sale very big companies huge companies have assets that are held for sale small companies are not usually involved in this so this four standards are only omitted i33 i34 ifrs 8 ifrs 5 you just need to remember it that's it now 
what are the accounting choices that are disallowed under SMEs only? If it's a big business, choices are still there. Okay. Number one is the goodwill. Remember how we calculate goodwill in consolidation? Consideration plus your fair value of NCI minus fair value of net asset. But here you don't have to calculate fair value of net assets. Sorry, NCI. Fair value of non-controlling interest is you don't have to calculate it. You only need your consideration that amount that you have purchased your business at and the fair value of net assets. That's it. Second, intangible assets. Revaluation model is not allowed for intangible assets, only cost. So it is costless, accumulated amortization and impairment. Remember, under IS38, revaluation model is also there. There is cost and revaluation model. Choice is there. But for SMS, no choice, only at cost. Third, investment property. For investment property, you only can measure it at fair value. Okay. After initial recognition, investment property has to be remeasured to fair value. And gain and losses will go to profit and loss. Okay, so the cost model can only be used if fair value cannot be measured reliably. Okay, otherwise, usually what happens, there is a choice, cost of fair value for investment property, right? But here, they say only fair value, but cost model can be used if fair value cannot be measured reliably. That's it. So, these are the three areas where accounting choices are disallowed. Goodwill, intangible assets, investment property. Not much. Now, we are coming to the key simplification. Major portion is here. First, simplification is the borrowing cost. Which standard talks about borrowing cost? Quickly uh, recall, IS23, yes, borrowing cost. We can capitalize some cost, right? But here, every expense to profit and loss. Borrowing cost are total expense to profit and loss. Second, about associates and joint control. Which standard? IS28. IS28 says equity method. But here they say you can held your associates and joint ventures at cost also. Okay. But in consolidation, in IS-28, only at equity. Third, depreciation and amortization estimates should not be reviewed annually. But according to IS-16 and IS-38, you have to. Here, you don't. These are the differences. Okay. But changes to these estimates are only required if there, is an if there is an indication that pattern of assets use has changed. Expenditure on research and development are expensed to provide and loss. Whereas in IS 38, intangible assets, what did it say? Research are expense. Development, if certain criteria are met, could be capitalized. But here, everything expense. And regarding the useful life of an intangible asset, if you cannot make a reliable estimate, assume it's 10 years. Okay. Then more simplifications is there regarding goodwill. Goodwill is amortized over its useful life. And here also, if you cannot measure the useful life, it's 10 years. It can never exit 10 years. Okay, it's just an assumption. Remember, in goodwill, okay, we don't amortize goodwill. We, there is only impairment. But for SMS, you amortize goodwill, like other intangible assets. Disposal of an overseas subsidiary. When we dispose an overseas subsidiary, the profit and loss recognized in other comprehensive income are recycled to profit and loss, correct? But in under SMS, they are not recycled to profit and loss. That's the difference. This is regarding cumulative exchange differences. This is recyclable. But here, under SMEs, the cumulative exchange differences are not recycled to profit and loss. Which standard talks about exchange differences, by the way? IS21, yes. Regarding financial instrument, you know financial instrument is a very big, extensive, and a complex uh, uh, standard, right? Simplifications has been made here also. Regarding first, debt in instruments. Debt in instruments, we have options. Re recall your IFRS 9. We have options. Amortized cost, fair value, profit and loss, right? Here, everything at amortized cost. Most debt in instrument, amortized cost. So, option is not there. It becomes easy. Second, regarding investment in shares, okay? You have to recognize them at fair value. And this fair value are recognized in profit and loss. Here also, we have options. Other comprehensive income, right? Fair through other comprehensive income and all. But here also, they said only through profit and loss. Okay? But if fair value cannot be measured reliably, then shares are held at cost less impairment. So that's it. These are the key simplifications. Whatever is there in the list, only up to this much you will be tested. Beyond this, you will not be tested. 
advantages and disadvantages this is something very easy from your common sense you can tell advantages obviously it is cost saving and time saving okay second sma standard is worded in a very accessible way all standards are located in that one single document so easier to find the information disadvantages issues of comparability when you are comparing two different companies one is using full ifrs the other one is using sma standard it's difficult to compare and second disadvantage is sma standard even though simplification omission has been made still it is very complex for very small businesses because regarding some standard simplification has not been yet done like leases and deferred tax okay so that's it for ifrs for sms now let's summarize this whole standard okay everything whatever the small company will follow this only the simplification omission and all key omissions are four earnings per share interim reporting segmented reporting asset help for sale coming to simplification borrowing costs expensed associate joint ventures held at cost depreciation amortization no need to review annually expenditure on research and development everything expensed useful life of intangible 10 years goodwill is amortized over its useful life and this should not exit 10 years disposal of overseas subsidiaries the cumulative exchange differences are not recycled to profit and loss measuring debt instruments amortized cost then accounting choices disallowed nci at fair value you should not find it revaluations of intangibles are not allowed and investment property are remeasured to fair value this is also not allowed sorry yeah you don't have an option okay you you can remeasure to fair value investment property but if fair value cannot be fine then you can take it at cost okay but the choice is disallowed thank you for watching and see you in my next lecture so we are done with all the standards ifrs standards are over make sure that you follow up with all my lectures starting with is 1 till ifrs vsms i just have two more lectures to finish my sbr series next is regarding analysis and interpretation and the last lecture is going to be on current issue okay both of them are very important for your sbr exam because they are going to come definitely they are going to you are going to get a question on both those areas analysis and interpretation and current issue so make sure that you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to the notifications and in case if you want to purchase the textbook or the revision kit or you want my slides you can download it what you need to do is as you go to my channel at the end like uh, you have to go to my about section when you go to about section you need to scroll down you will see that i have given some links like acc materials afm lecture sbl lecture sbl lecture so if it says sbl lecture you can get all my slides just click there all my lectures are there from first to last and if you want to download my acc textbooks and revision kit for any subject triple a afm sbr sbl you just have to go to acc material click there and find the relevant textbook and kit download it Thank you.